Hello, Tanya. Thank you so much for sending me this video. Uh, let's go and take a look at your muscle up. So first off, your jump up to the rings look good. Your grip looks good. Um, you're still using the false grip, so if you can, let's try and, you know, maybe sometime we can get together when this is all over and we can work on um, doing muscle-ups without the false grip. I know that you're comfortable doing it, but that is going to fatigue the forearms a lot, um, especially when you're doing high rep movements like this. It also takes away from your kips slightly, so that's just something to keep in mind. So let's go and keep going forward. So first off, the back kip swing is pretty good. I would like to see your legs straighter, so I would like to see them more at this angle coming back rather than kind of bent here like this okay uh so by doing this it's it's not terrible but you are losing a little bit of energy that you could be transferring uh so keep that in mind um uh, and let's go and keep watching so so not bad catch the rings pretty deep which means that we got to work on your pulling a little bit more you have a good dip which means that your dip strength is there um, so it's going to rewind. So as you're following through with the kip, um, oh, sorry, I'm a little ahead of myself here. Let me rewind. Um, so on this first muscle up right here, see how early you're breaking at the midline? So you're already breaking at the hip here. So here's your angle, which is right here, and your torso is here. So this needs to be um, in a more curved position. So I'd like to see everything more here in a hollow body position rather than breaking at the hip. As you come, and same thing, we, when we're work, working on this, we're working on transferring that energy and utilizing the hips as much as possible. And as we come up here, you can see that your legs are also lagging behind you a bit. So I'd like to actually see your feet go come up higher. So you see you're already bending here. So you're making an angle here with your legs and your torso. So we're doing here, we're here, and we're here. So. This is not an ideal position. Our ideal position was to maintain that hollow body position, just like how we do hollow rocks. So in this position right here in your kip, I'd like to see you more here with your torso. Does this make sense? So I like to keep these knees down longer. And as we move forward, the transition's there, but as you can see, your feet come up anyways. So you might as well leave them up there. Uh, the transition's pretty good. Um, you're catching the rings. You're, really deep which means we do have to work on your pull which means your kip could be better and your upper body pull could be better so that's just something that we can work on later on so you can see the kip there where you're breaking early with the midline the knees are here so you're in this angle here so this position is not bad for your torso you can see that how it's kind of a hollow body position but your knees are lagging behind your legs are lagging behind you here so i like to see this position but with your feet out all the way to where this red angle is where the american flag is and as you come up, like I said, the transition's pretty good. You do a good job of transitioning with both hands at the same time instead of chicken wing. I know you like to do that sometimes. The rings do, you do a good job keeping the rings close. Your transition does look good. The catch is pretty deep. And then the kip out is good. You do a good job locking out the elbows. Now let's go and take a look at your return. So as you come down, your feet come up way too high. So see how this, how you're like sliding back right here so the this is the angle that you should come down on with your feet because this will allow you to come back into a back a better back swing when the problem is when your feet come up too high past this point is that your hips fall too fast and you fall too directly underneath the rings rather than kind of coming out and around like a kipping pull up on the ring so we want to you want you to come out and around out here rather than coming straight down like this and by keeping by uh by having, let me clear this, sorry. And by having your feet come up too high on the rekip, see how, see how you fall almost directly back under the rings and your feet are way out here. Like this is a very awkward body angle to get a rekip in and to rebound. And you can see how it actually takes you further forward. So look at this angle with the ring. So this actually is a pretty good position. Again, I'd like to see you with your legs straighter down here rather than bending up here like this. And then as you kip up again, so you got that back swing, and as you're coming up again, so not bad. So each rep looks pretty pretty identical. So it looks like we got some mechanical issues to 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 kind of work out. I think you can get more power in your kip um, by doing what I said earlier and working on this re 
reset here. So this reset right here is a little awkward. So have those feet coming down at more of a 45 degree angle for me. And then that looks good. And then as you come through, the, as you come through, oops, sorry. Um, as you come through for the second muscle up, same thing, same mechanical things. The second one looks pretty good. Again, you're catching, see how deep you're catching the rings right here? So the rings, you're catching them really deep, which means that we have a lot of work to do on your kip and your upper body pull. But your dip looks good, so you have a strong dip, which means you have a good press. Which is usually the hardest part when coaching uh, female athletes is that usually the dip is the limiter, not the pull. Usually female athletes are really good at, at, at um, having a good upper body pull. So that's something that's really easy to work on. So not bad, Tanya. Let me know if you have any questions on this. But my, my first uh, thing would be to let's build some more upper body strength. So I'd like to see you do some weighted pull-ups, maybe like five sets of five weighted pull-ups or strict pull-ups. And then go on, also going from there, you could do, um, make sure you're also doing supinated pull-ups, so palms facing you. And, you know, five sets of five with about 90 seconds to rest is a good place to start for just building the upper body strength. And I think the main thing you need to work on on your muscle-up, on the actual kip itself, isn't even the kip. Because that's something that you can just kind of mentally work on and practice on your own is just keeping the leg straighter in the kipping position right here. Oops, wrong one. Um, keeping the legs straighter, like I said, being at more of an ang a boarded angle like this, um, and also the return or the the uh, dismount could be better. Letting your don't let your feet come up as high when you come down. So that's again that's way too high. Your feet are almost in line with the rings. So let your feet come down at a better angle down here. And I think those are the only two things you really need to work on.